everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I've got another fun project for you today. So let me show you um, what we're gonna make, and um, then we'll get started. So I've got two already put together, and then I'm gonna show you how to make a template to make these really easy to make fast once you've made the template. Um, and then we'll make a cute one together. So this one I made with book page um, and layered it with more book page um, because I wanted to and to make it a little bit sturdier. It's got a cute wood button on there that I sewed on. I layered with some pretty papers. And then it just has a, it's almost like a little, um, like a billfold, like, you know, a crisscross billfold. And there's a pocket here. And then there's a pocket behind, and it holds all kinds of stuff. Um, and, oh, and this is a little pocket too, right? Cute. All right, so that's one way to do it, and depending on how you, you glue the flaps down. But then on this one, I made this one with scrap of paper, and I think the little um, Frenchie Bulldog is so cute. And it has um, one of those vintage buttons I got when I went thrifting that I showed you guys um, sewn on. I thought the blue was perfect. And then this one, instead of gluing the pockets down, I left them as flaps. So this one opens up. So we've got a pocket here. Um, I made a little cute journaling card and um, layered it with the other side of this uh, scrapbook paper. And then there's a pocket um, on this flap as well, okay? Um, but I could have put a pocket on this side. Instead, I just decorated it. Same thing, decorated this side on this one, okay? So same template, depending on how you then just glue glue it together at the end, will depend on if yours opens up or not. Um, the flaps open up, okay? So now I prepped for this video and to make this for you guys, um, before I went on vacation. And so now I've got to hopefully remember everything that I did um, so we can make these quick and easy for you. Um, so I'm gonna do my best. So um, I'm gonna first make a template just using, this is just part of a manila file folder. And I cut it to the size we need, which is 11 inches by five and a half. So 11 by five and a half. And in the description, I will include all the measurements for you to hopefully make it a little bit easier. We are gonna score this um, to make the template. And like I said, I'm gonna use this just to trace on to other paper so that I can cut it out um, quick. Um, you could uh, make your template, I mean, the 11 is just a regular piece in the US of a 11 by eight and a half piece of paper, right? You could just make it out of a piece of cardstock. Um, you could go ahead and make it on the scrap of paper maybe or something that you wanna use, but I'm gonna make this one so that I can use it over and over. The template that I made before, again, I just made it with, um, just copy weight paper, which is fine, but I wanted to show you guys one a little bit sturdier. So the first thing you're gonna do is you need to score. If you have a scoreboard, use that. If not, use a ruler and some kind of straight edge. And you wanna score it at four inches and eight inches, okay? So four and eight, okay? All right, I think I did that right. Four and eight. All right. Now I'm going to turn it. Right now it doesn't matter which way, but just turn it so that you're on the five and a half inch side. And then you're going to do a score line at two inches. And this is now going to be the top. So basically we are scoring down two inches from the top. So now I know this is the top. Okay. Um, Then, got to remember what I'm doing here. Um, we're going to score. So I've got my two inches from the top and I went all the way across. Then in this first quadrant, so the, the section that, um, eight, nine, 10, that has three inches left, so it's in your top left-hand corner, all right? 
we also want to score just down to this line at two and three quarters. So we already have a two inch score line, right? Now I'm going to go two and three quarters and I'm going to score just up to the line. And I hope you guys can see that. Okay. So I've got a line there. And then I just want to double check my measurement really quick. Then we're also going to score at two and a half, but in this quadrant. So to do that, it doesn't really matter which direction we have, you're gonna flip your paper over. So now we're working in the section that has four inches, okay? So you've got that two inch score line and we need to do it one at two and a half just to this line. Now remember, you only have to make the template once and then you have it. So don't let this overwhelm you. Okay, so I hope you can see. I'm gonna get my pencil out and just reinforce what we did. We scored at four inches and at eight inches, okay? And then we turned it and we scored at two inches. So this is two inches. And then in that same section, we scored at two and three quarter inches, okay? And then we flipped it over and we scored at two and a half inches, okay? All right, that is what we did. All right, so for right now, I don't think I need my scoreboard anymore. So I'm gonna set it aside. Ooh, making a lot of noise, Pam. Okay, now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut some pieces out. So, again, I'm holding mine. This is that four inch section, which left a three inch section. We are gonna cut out this entire part. Okay, and then we're gonna cut out this entire part. All right, so I'm gonna cut along this two and three quarter inch score line and then along, you know, where I scored it here at eight inches. And then we're gonna cut this section out as well. And I think this is gonna be easy for you to see once I start doing it. Cut right below the score line so that everything will fold up neatly. Um, and then when we're cutting this way, I'm going to cut um, just, again, to the right of the score line, the right to the middle section. So I basically, I cut the score line out. The score line was left on this piece of paper, if that makes sense. All right, so now we have that piece. Now I'm going to cut out this section. Same thing, cut out your score line. And really, the score, a lot of this scoring was just to show you where to cut. All right. So now you're left with a piece that looks like this. A little cattywampus, right? Um, now what I want to do is on the four-inch side, just take a ruler and make a mark for yourself at one and a half inches right here. Okay? Okay. And then I'm also going to make a mark that is a quarter of an inch from this score line over. So I'm just gonna lay my ruler there and just kind of mark it. So now I have a mark at a quarter inch and one at one and a half inches. And then I'm just gonna draw a line because I'm gonna cut this section out. So now we're gonna get rid of that piece, okay? And you know, cut nice and straight, and you'll be good. All right, so now we have something that looks like this. All right, so now we're gonna wanna crease on our score lines. So this is was that original two inches from the top that's gonna make our flap. I'm gonna bring this one over, and again, try to fold as neatly as you can. <laughs> Make sure everything's straight. Even though you've got those score lines, you know, still pay attention to where you're folding so that if you were a little crooked, you don't get it all cattywampus. All right, look, that's it.
That's so easy. Now I did on mine round the um, edges here and I like that, but for my template, I'm just gonna leave it all square because then I'll just use my corner chomper when I put it on the paper that I'm using, okay? So now you have a piece that is 11 inches this way at its highest point. It's still the five and a half inches, okay? And then that's a, a two inch um, flat. Now again, we can glue this together so you just have the two pockets like this. I guess I wouldn't really do it that way, I don't think. Um, the two pockets like this, or you can, when you make yours, leave it where these open and add all kinds of pockets inside. The choice is yours. All right, so now I have a lovely template, and then let me show you what, how I'm gonna use it. And honestly, with your template, you don't even have to fold it if you don't want to, I guess. I found a piece book page, and this is from one of my bird books, um, one of my vintage bird books, um, and I went ahead and cut it to the 11 by five and a half size, so it would be ready to go. I actually glued two together because I wanted it to be a little bit sturdier. Um, and then all I'm doing is laying my template on here, and it looks like my paper was not quite 11 inches long, but it was super close, so I'm just kind of centering it on here. And then I am going to trace my template. Now, if your paper, if it matters to you, like what's the front and your flaps, look at your paper. I don't care on my book page um, what side is what. So I just traced around that, and then I'm going to cut it out, and then I'll show you how we'll fold it. Um, and then I'm going to layer some fun, pretty papers on here that I have just sitting in my paper stack over here. All right. And I'm going to cut this section out. So these actually come together quite quickly once you have, once you can just trace it. Okay. Now, again, you could pull out your scoreboard if you want to, but I'm just going to use my ruler. I'm going to use my grid here to show me one, two inches. Two inches. And I'll just use my bone folder. This paper, again, is pretty thin. It doesn't need a hard score. There we go. And again, you can just fold these over to match. I'm just going to score to make it a little bit easier, and I'm just using the edge um, of this flap to show me, you know, where I'm going to want to fold at. Okay, this one, if I go this way, the pockets will be the way my template was, but let's just, for the fun of it, it doesn't really matter which one you fold over first. Pins on your paper. So now my angled pocket's on that side, like this. Or, again, this paper doesn't have really a front or a back. So, I can do it either way. I hope that made sense what I was trying to say. Whichever way you want to do it. Okay. So now it's exactly like my prototypes with the angled pocket on the left. All right. Super easy. Again, I am going to um, do the half inch corner round for that top flap because I just think it makes it look nice and finished and I am actually going back to the way I originally folded and creased it only because where I glued this paper together it for some reason is liking that direction a little bit better all right so now all that's left to do is to um, decorate and um, add some little pretties in here. So what I do when I have something like this and I want, I don't really know yet like what size, um, you know, the pieces that I need. Again, you can measure and I usually make everything about a quarter of an inch smaller than the section I'm covering. Um, we can cut it, we can tear it, we've got lots of options. This one I'm gonna make, um, I'm going to make it to, to open up completely. So I want to put a piece of paper on the front and back panel to make it look pretty. 
So that means I need to cut a piece of paper three and a quarter inches by three and three quarter inches. That'll leave me a little bit of trim all the way around. So if I can remember those measurements, I'm just gonna do the paper tear method. And I'm gonna double check. <laughs> all right, three and a quarter. One, two, three and one quarter. And that'll be pretty. I'll be able to choose um, the flower, some butterflies. Knowing I'm gonna also add a pocket, I may not wanna cover up my butterfly. Now I can measure that three and three quarters, or I can just lay my piece of paper on my pocket, decide where I need it to be, and I don't even have to measure. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Okay. I have not started inking anything yet. Um, I'll probably go back later and ink all around the book page. But since I'm going to glue this down, I'm going to um, ink it. Now, I need another piece that is the same size to put on the back. So before I choose which side to put down, I am going to just use the one I just did to help measure what size I need. So I'm just laying them together, laying my ruler down, holding it nice and snug, and tearing. All right, whenever I can um, avoid having to worry about measuring, I do. Um, and again, you could cut this with your scissors. You could draw a line, right, and cut it. You could um, put it on your paper cutter, whatever. I'm gonna have the butterflies be on the outside. Um, but you, when you tear it, which is a lot of projects like this I like to do, you get a little bit more of a rough edge and then that distress ink or your, the ink, if you're gonna ink it, will show up a little bit more. Make it look a little more vintagey or junky or whatever, which I like. And right, I am still, if you guys watched my video about my new, what I think is my new favorite glue, um, I'm still using it. This is the PVA glue. I've gotten lots of comments on that one and people saying, yes, I love that glue or how they use it. Um, and I do agree. It doesn't grab as quick as the art glitter glue. It gives you a little more wiggle room time if you need it. Um, I actually think this is probably going to be, be my everyday glue, but I will make sure I probably always have our glitter glue too. Um, like one thing that I noticed that I wanted to use it for was when I was just adding, um, I think it might have been on this. Was it on this? No, but it wasn't on this. But adding just a little piece of like a, a twine bow or something. A lot of times I'll just do a, a nice little dollop of our glitter glue, push it in. It dries fast and it does not go anywhere. So there's, you know, lots of things. And of course, our glitter glue is awesome too. But for the price point, I imagine this is what I'll be using most of the time. Um unless I need something to grab really fast. Okay, um, now, and that it, already it's just so pretty, right? I wanna pick something to layer on my flap, and I only have one piece of this, so what I've gotta decide is, is there enough of it to do all my layering, and then I can add pockets with a different kind of paper, or do I wanna layer with something else and then save some of this for some tags or the top pretties, I don't know. I've got to decide though. Um, and I'm going to put some kind of closure on it. Probably not on camera just because of the time that it takes. But um, I've shown y'all how to sew a button on paper before. So if you need um, a link to that vi a video that shows that, let me know and I can help you find one. Um, I am just sort of eyeballing the size of this based on my little little billfold here, my little folder. There we go. And it'll have a little bit more of a gap from the top to bottom, but I'm okay with that. And there's also a little bit of a white strip here where it printed. And I'm going to take off and I'm going to round my corners. Yep, that'll be cute. Um, 
and that butterfly will be right there. Um, so again, a lot of times with these projects, you can, and, I, and that's what I'm going to do here in just a second. I had this one piece of paper I've been wanting to use that's so pretty, but um, I'm going to just go to my scrap bin and we're going to just find some things that will coordinate nicely and that I can layer on here. I'm going to bring it down because I didn't get it quite wide, wide enough and we're going to put a strip of something something right there. I'm not sure what yet. Um, I have some masterboard collage papers that I've been using um, here recently, and we may use a little strip of that to decorate this up. So I'm going to tear off of this edge like half an inch wide piece. And depending on the thickness of your masterboard, sometimes it tears better than others. And then decide... Ah, that's pretty and I'm gonna hand tear it I'm gonna ink it up and then I'll show you how that's gonna look so again if you ever cut or tear your paper that and it's a little too small I mean don't don't beat yourself up you can fix it all right so I'm just gonna glue that on there and I think it's gonna look nice and scrappy and make me happy that rhymes um It'll be good. So this is really my first day back in my craft room since we went on vacation. Um, we've been home now a couple of days, um, but I was busy doing some other things, um, which I'm going to be telling y'all about too, which is exciting. So, okay, that looks good. I think some kind of closure will take up some space there, maybe a word. Um, and I want something on this side. And I'm just looking at scraps I have laying on my table. I think on the inside, that coordinates enough. We're gonna um, just tear a piece of this to go on this top flap. But yeah, so we got back from vacation. We had a great time. My cousin got married. It was a beautiful wedding. Um, we had a lot of fun. We went and saw my son. Anyway, just, just a great trip. My husband and I had a lot of fun. And, um, and we got back, and we were so happy to see our little dogs. <laughs> we missed them. Um, we always miss them when we travel. Um, and then, anyway, we were, you know, getting unpacked and just doing all kinds of stuff. And then yesterday, this is the part I was going to tell you all about. Um, so, I think I've mentioned, I've got a, a vendor spot at a local painted tree that's going to be opening up here just in the next few weeks. And we think vendor move-in is next weekend. So I'm going to be really busy with that. And I'll post some videos and show you guys how that's going as I set up my little in-person shop. I'm so excited. But um, I know I needed another table or display or something. And I was hoping maybe for an antique and to kind of sit in the center of my shop. And so we were going to go to this antique store and look yesterday. And um, then we saw a sign for a yard sale. And I like a good yard sale. And so, um, of course, my sweet husband said, oh, let's go see. So he turns and we go and we find this yard sale. And um, this lady, and I'm not exaggerating, you guys. There were just so many boxes of books. And in fact, I have a video of when we got them home, because yes, they came home with me, um, filled up. I mean, we didn't have the truck packed like if, if we really were trying to maximize space, but the back of the truck, the bed of the truck, it has a camper shell. And then the back seat, because it has a back seat, was filled with boxes of these books. And um, anyway, it, it just, I got a great deal. The lady um, does sales in our neighborhood and her neighborhood, which is really close to us. I'm just looking for scraps, y'all. Um, let me use some sheet music. Um, just to, um, again, I'm just gonna do some layering while I'm yapping. And so she sells things for people that need their homes cleaned out. So her clients, um, she said, you know, she has some individuals that live in the nursing home and she, um, you know, cleans their house out and does, I guess, estate sales, but, you know, yard sales, whatever. And so this was someone, you know, someone's collection. And she, um, 
anyway, so I, I said, oh, are you selling them by the box? Or you just, you know, I just dig through them and get the ones I want. You know, what's the price on these? And she was like, well, I'll sell them to you however you want, honey. And um, she's like, you can buy one, you can buy all of them, you can just buy a box, you know, you can fill a box, you know, and we can figure it out. And I said, oh, okay. So, of course, my husband, you got to love him. He's like, well, ask her how much it is for all of them. And I kind of look at him like, there's no way, we one, that I'm going to spend that much money and get all of these books. And other people were, all, were looking through them as well. But, you know, he egged me on. So, I asked. So funny. And she kind of looked at me and she's like, well, how about $50? And I had already noticed, guys, there were some fabulous books. And I kind of looked at her like, are you serious? Because it was early too. It was in the morning and she was still going to be there all day. And I said, um, before I could say anything, there was also this really pretty round table that um, it's a round one, but then it has two leaves so it could turn into, you know, an oval. And it had $50 on it. And my husband's like, well, what if we take all the books and this table for $90? And she said, done. <laughs> and then there were these other people looking at the books. And I said, you know what? Let them keep looking. And if they want to get some before we load them all up, that's fine. So while we were standing there, she sold. Um, like people came up with an armful of books. And she was like, $5, you know. So she sold about $15 worth of the books that she had just sold to me, but that was fine. There were so many, you guys. Um, and we got them all loaded up and, um, and then we ended up having to come home and unload them and go back and get the table. And when I went back to get the table, I found a vintage Scrabble game that I wanted. And, um, she told me I could have the Scrabble game. We gave her a hundred dollars. I, I felt better giving her a hundred dollars. Um, and we took all the books. Um, I also found a book that had all this vintage ledger paper that was blank in it. I'll show it to you guys in another video. I'm so excited. Um, it's just beautiful. Um, but from vintage dictionaries, um, there's some first editions. I haven't even gone through all of them yet. So I'm sure I'll be talking about this for a long time. I won't need books for, for forever. But anyway, we got home and I started digging through them. And we had some lunch. And then she called me. Oh, so she took my phone number. And she said, well, you know, you live so close. And I do these sales. You know, if I come across more books or lots of books that I think you might be interested in, you know, I could call you. And I was like, well, of course. So I gave her my name and phone number. So I have a new friend. Her name's Trudy. And um, now the angled pockets, you do, you know, they're a little bit more challenging, but I'm just going to lay my ruler here and tear. And I did not get the right angle at all. I wasn't paying attention. So I'll do that again and we'll pay attention. But anyway, Trudy called and someone had dropped off some more books. My husband thinks she probably just got them out of her attic. But anyway, three more boxes of books. And she said, do you want to come see them? They're really old. So I said, of course I do. <laughs> and so my husband and I got back in the truck. All right, this is the way to do this. I'm going to stop my story for a second. Um, take your paper and then use the other side to make sure you can actually see the angle that you need. And I want it to be a little bit smaller, of course, because I want it to frame in there. So I'm bringing it down just a touch. I hope you guys can see this just a touch like this. Now I can see the angle and I want to make sure I don't tear my pocket, of course. But now I can see the angle. And this is vintage sheet music, so it tears very easily. So now I've got the angle of the pocket that I want. I do have to trim off this side here to make it fit in here. All right, we're in business. And it had that weird angle where I tore it the wrong way, but I'm okay with that. I can patch this together. It's going to be just fine. Okay. So sometimes you do have to fiddle with it a little bit. And again, I kind of messed up and that's okay. I'm going to trim it off and I can put another piece of paper here. I can put a, a, another pocket here and cover it up. There's so many things to fix that. Um, so anyway, long story short, I got another three boxes of books from Trudy and then she was laughing and she said, I promise not to call you again today. Um, but I certainly hope she calls me again. <laughs> Not that I need any more books right now. 
Um, so I plan to make some different, a different variety of my paper packets um, for you guys that like those and put those in my shop, my Etsy shop. And certainly I'll be making all kinds of creations with them. Some of the books themselves um, I think are actually quite valuable. And so I'm going to do a little research, of course, before I tear anything up. But there's everything from, you know, more recent to, um, I saw a lot of books like from the 1930s, 40s, 50s, 60s, that, that era. There are some um, into the 1800s. Those I don't usually tear up if, you know, they're getting to be that old. Um, but again, dictionaries, law dictionaries, medical dictionaries. I love dictionary paper. Um, some great photo books, some travel books. There was one that had some really pretty floral images. So again, like I said, I haven't even gone through all the boxes, but I'm very excited. So that was yesterday because then I was so excited when I came home. Um, I did not come back into the Sparkle Craft Room. I... Um, I'm just going to use this, even though it's not quite the right size. Um, I sat in the garage because I wanted to kind of um, sort through. There's, you know, there's some like paperbacks, fiction from the last couple of years that I'm probably going to just take to Goodwill um, or, you know, see if somebody wants to read them, whatever. Um, you know, but there's not a lot like that. And so I'm kind of sorting them into um age if it's a reference or a book that has images a dictionary you know that kind of thing and then anything that looks like it might actually you know be quite precious and have value um I'm setting those aside too so it's sort of a sorting project and it kept me very busy um, most of the day yesterday. Um, but it was worth it. I was sneezing a lot from the dust um, and probably a little bit of mildew. Those I'm making sure I, I also get rid of, the ones that are like too damaged. But honestly, I went through hundreds yesterday and I think I found two that I had any concerns about. But that with the pollen, it was a little warm. Um, I was sneezing and having some allergy issues yesterday by the evening. So I took a nice shower got all cleaned up and life was good again so what a fun day so now though I am I'm back in my craft room I'm gonna figure something out here for this little piece I haven't decided what yet um and I wanted to make this tutorial because like I said I had it all ready to go I just didn't have time I'm gonna do it on an angle I think it'll be cute um I didn't have time before I left I want, I wonder, you know, that might be weird, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to kind of cut around the shape of this flower. Yeah, and I'm just going to stick it on here um, to give a little more structure to that piece of paper, that book page, but also just kind of it kind of almost matches that piece of that flower and I like it. I'm not sure what I'm gonna put on here yet anyway. This may get covered up after I sit here and worried about it. Um, so um, I do have the table and now my husband has to fix the table because it isn't in great shape, but I think it will look wonderful in my shop. Um, so he has a project now. Um, and our youngest daughter is coming home for the summer from college on Tuesday. Um, so we just, it's going to be busy. And then my um, daughter is graduating from college um, the day after Mother's Day. We're going to be with her Mother's Day and then through her graduation and everything um, in Maryland. So I've got a busy few weeks coming up. So hopefully I'll have time to make you guys some videos and have them scheduled during all of this fun chaos that I have going on in my life.
this is so cute. I love how scrappy it's looking. I'm using my scraps. And this, again, shows you you don't have to have everything always be matchy-matchy. I'm going to make a little pocket here. I'm going to make a really shallow little pocket here using this paper to help it all coordinate. And then decide what else we need, and we'll probably call this tutorial done. Um, and I'm not really explaining everything I'm doing, and these are things that I've shown you guys in other videos, but like here, I want a pocket. So I'm just laying the paper here to get the approximate size that I want it, not measuring. And then this is just gonna be a super simple um, pocket that'll fit on this flap. And just by adding glue to three sides, and again, it, it could be decorated. We could add a little tag, um, some numbers, a word, something like that if we wanted to. But now, see, we have a pocket. And I'm probably gonna do, just to get the idea of an angle, since I have an angle here, I'm gonna put an angled pocket right here. All right, so that's the width of this where I cut it or tore it a minute ago. So I'm gonna get it turned that way. This is about the height of this section. And then I'm just gonna decide what angle I want. This is um, card stock. And it does tear, but, you know, it's not like tearing the book page or the sheet music. Um, you kind of have to grip it and make sure you're tearing it. All right, hold it where you don't want to glue, which is on that angle. And then add glue to these two sides. And I left the glue off of the top, too, because... Um, I just want a little more real estate in there. If I had glued it, you know, we'd only have, you know, to here. All right. Cute. That, I think, I'm just probably going to put a quote or some words right here. So I just need something right here. And I want this butterfly. So again, I want to make sure I get it the right length. So I'm going to kind of line it up. I'm going to use my grid to help me make sure I have this paper straight. I want it to sit in here. And again, I'm just using the lines to help me see. And I'm going to tear it right here. And it is going to be the correct um, width this way. And then I want it to fit in here. So again, guys... You can measure everything, and I'm not going to tell you not to, but sometimes this just makes, I'm going to just angle this, makes life fun and easy not happen to you. All right, so now I'm going to have, um, I've got a pocket, a pocket, a pocket. This is just going to be a decoration, and I've got to decide what I want to do here in the center. Again, I'm holding it by the top because I don't want to glue my pocket closed. Always reminding myself of that. Now we have another little butterfly. Very sweet, right? Okay. Um, do I want to cover this up by adding some other kind of tuck spot? You know what we're going to do? I'm going to go back to my piece of collage master board I have, and I'm going to make us just a little mini belly band. Let's see what piece of this I want to use. I'm going to make it kind of thin, like that, that piece is the right size. <laughs> I might want it a little bit thicker than that. Um, why don't I, you can always make it smaller or thinner in a second. I'm going to just tear a piece about this width and decide which portion of it. I think I want to use the polka dots and this little bit of dictionary page. So again, I'm going to line it up with my pretty paper to help me know what height I want. I want it to be the same height as 
um, my, my decorative paper here. It's a little wide, but I like it, and it'll um, help things stay in there better, being a little bit wider. So now, again, options. I could put it here, and we could make it a pocket this way, or here this way. I'm gonna put it a little off center, and leave it open on both sides as a more traditional tuck spot. I'm gonna do glue just at the top and bottom. Um, a little off center, I said. Um, just cause I like that look with this little piece of petal or butterfly wing that's right there. You still get a hint of that flower. Now, this is where with the PVA glue, I need to just not mess with it and let it sit there. If it was the art glitter, I'd be ready to go ahead and jam some things in there. But I just want to make sure these pockets have time to really grab a hold. All right. Um, you could even put something on the back if you wanted to. This is also something we could have, like, left the back plain. Uh, you could still do it with it being decorated. But it could be glued down in, on a journal page. And then you could have this interactive element in your journal. And even like not even bulk it up with a button or anything to keep it nice and flat. That would be fun. Um, you know, if we did add it to a journal, we could leave the top open or the side open. Um, wouldn't that be fun? And you just have all kinds of places to put pretty items. Now I haven't made anything yet to go in these pockets. Um, I don't know if I have anything in my little box here that coordinates the right way. Probably not, but we'll, we'll do it anyway, just to show you guys. All right. That fit nicely in there and being, like I said, being wider, you can't really see the mushroom, but I know it's not going to go anywhere. All right, none of these things perfectly coordinate. I'm just grabbing stuff out of my um, little box here. And um, we'll put them in. And later I'll go back and either make some things that definitely coordinate or add to these so that um, they go well. That just kind of shows you what we did. All right, I hope you guys like it. I hope you will make yourself a template because um, then these come together super fast. It is a great way to use up if you have some scrapbook paper and you want to make some fun happy mails, even with the button. It's not too bulky. Um, they look great made with book page. Um, this one, even the back, I just layered more book page and didn't even decorate it and it looks great. So anyway, use your imagination. Let me know if you decide to make some of these. I would love to see what you make. Um, and I appreciate your guys' support and you joining me. Um, and I hope you enjoyed hearing about my, my haul. I do have a really quick video of me showing what the truck looked like full of the books um, that I'll, I'll post here soon as a short so you guys can see it. But um, Anyway, let me know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks.